Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Cameroon 5. Today's video is going to be about the group 2 elements and we're also going to consider some past paper questions based on our understanding within the same video. So when we talk, up, talk about the group 2 elements, we know few things which are for sure that they have a valency of 2, which means there are 2 electrons in the outermost shell. Since we are considering everything in terms of AS level, we should know that when we talk about two electrons in the large shell, their configuration always ends at n s2. n is equal to the number of their period and s means the s subshell and they have two electrons in the s subshell. Just to recall that s subshell means that it has a spherical shape which looks like this and within the spherical shape there are two electrons so their last configuration their ending configuration is always s2 another important feature is that they are metals obviously they lose electrons so they are highly electropositive we'll comment on their electropositivity because we'll see how few of them are more electropositive than the others so they are electro positive when we look at their general properties, we should know that it starts with beryllium. Beryllium is the first element. Then we got magnesium. Then we got calcium. Then we have strontium, so strontium. And then we have barium. Their atomic number, their atomic mass, their melting point, their ionization energy, and their flame colors is what we are concerned with here. So beryllium has four electrons in total. Magnesium got 12. Calcium got 20. Strontium got 38. And when we talk about barium, so it has 56 total electrons or protons. When we talk about their atomic masses, beryllium has a mass of 9.01. Magnesium is 24. 0 0.30 calcium is 40.07 strontium is 87.62 and then we talk about barium so it's 137.32 obviously their atomic masses are increasing and these are their relative atomic masses when we talk about their melting point value so their melting point values also show a trend and when we talk about their melting point values, you will see that how it changes and then goes back against the trend. So melting point for beryllium is 1551, which is a pretty high value. I'm writing all these values in Kelvin, by the way. So when we talk about magnesium, magnesium has a lower melting point, which is 922 Kelvin. You might expect that the melting points will keep on decreasing. But calcium, on the other hand, again has a higher melting point of 1112. So melting point is again increasing. Then when we talk about, for example, um, strontium, it's 1042. And then for barium, it is 998. So melting point is not showing a trend. And we will see why melting point is not exactly following a trend. Their ionization energy values will show a very crisp trend. So beryllium has an ionization energy value of 900, which is a pretty high value. Then 738, so the value is decreasing. It decreases more, so 590 for calcium. Then strontium has a value of 550, which means decreasing again. And then you can see barium has the least ionization energy value, which is 503. Their flame colors are no color for beryllium mainly you can expect a white color for magnesium's flame color calcium has a brick red flame color then when we talk about strontium it's a crimson red color and finally it's apple green which is very a tinge of apple green but it's a very beautiful color for barium's flame color let's quickly talk about the idea of ionization energy first because that is following a very simple trend so ionization energy just to recall you guys that ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one outermost electron 
one outermost electron from one mole gaseous atoms or ions depending on what ionization energy value we are considering. You can see the ionization energy values are decreasing. They are decreasing. Why is that? So quickly have an idea that beryllium atom is smaller, magnesium is bigger, calcium is even more bigger than perhaps even strontium is the biggest so far and barium would even be more bigger. So when you talk about four protons, magnesium has 12 protons, calcium has 20 protons and if I'm not wrong strontium has 38 protons. So you can see that proton number is increasing. There's no doubt in that. Proton number increases. But you can also see that atomic radius is also increasing. So atomic radius is also increasing. And why is that? Atomic radius is increasing because of more shells. And you should always remember that with more shells, you always write a phrase of more shielding. The inner shells will not allow the nuclear pull on the outermost electron. So you can say last sentence should be less nuclear pull applied on the valence electrons or you can say outermost electrons. So when outermost electrons get less nuclear pull, it is easier to remove them. And that is why ionization energy values decrease down the group, decrease down the group. For melting point, we should just consider the idea that melting point is dependent upon the density of the substances and that is something out of the scope of our AS level syllabus to be honest. They will never ask you a reasoning why melting point of calcium is perhaps higher than magnesium or why strontium is lower than calcium. They will never ask you that. So my recommendation would be to not worry about it. For atomic radius, we have clearly talked about the idea how shells increase and then shielding also increases so atomic radius is also done let's talk about their chemical reactivity that is an interesting concept because we will be asked to explain it when you talk about chemical reactivity group two elements react by losing electrons so number one your group two elements react by losing electrons and you can see that losing electrons is easier for barium and strontium than it is for beryllium and magnesium, right? So, as ionization energy decreases down the group, as ionization energy decreases down the group, the ease of losing an electron increases. The ease of losing an electron increases because now less energy is required to lose an electron. And that is why elements down the group, down the group are more reactive than the ones at the top of the group. So they become more reactive. So this is how you explain their chemical reactivity. Let's quickly go through their chemical reactions in general. So chemical reactions in general they react with oxygen they react with steam and that is something that we should keep in mind calcium reacts with cold water but magnesium won't so we will write this that cold water is also a reactant but not all of them react so when they react with oxygen it is at oxygen molecule one mole of oxygen reacts with double mole of these metals to produce double mole of metal oxide this is what happens you will expect a flame color here you will expect a flame with a color here and mostly your products are white powders or you can say white solids when they react with steam so steam which means h2o vapors react with your metal to produce metal oxide and hydrogen gas will be evolved also 
You should also know one thing that whenever steam is the reactant, you will always receive metal oxide. The third scenario is with cold water. So when cold water reacts, it's not a reaction given by magnesium or beryllium. Magnesium will seldom react with cold water. But cold water reacts with other metals like calcium, strontium and definitely barium. You will receive a metal hydroxide which is metal OH twice in the aqueous state. You can always eat aqueous or solid because calcium hydroxide is not very soluble but it is sparingly soluble so you should know calcium hydroxide is sparingly soluble which means not very soluble on the other hand the one at the lower end barium hydroxide is very soluble you should know that these are alkaline in nature so these are alkaline in nature your ph will increase as you produce the metal hydroxide so in today's shorter video we have talked about the quick properties of group two elements we come across the reasoning for them and then we talked about few equations in the next video we will be talking about how a critical question how a complicated question can come from the carbonate nitrate and sulfate solubilities of group two stay tuned guys thanks